First Story, The Shadows of Silent Creek by Mark Thompson I served as a police officer in the small town of Silent Creek, nestled deep in the woods of Oregon. The job was quiet, and crime was a rarity in our tight-knit community. But there was one incident that still sends shivers down my spine. It was a foggy autumn night when a distressed woman called 911, reporting strange figures lurking in the woods near her property. I, along with my partner Officer Turner, responded to the call. The air was thick with an unsettling tension as we ventured into the dense forest. The woman, Mrs. Anderson, guided us to the edge of her property, pointing nervously into the darkness. We strained our eyes, trying to make sense of the shadows. That's when we heard it soft, echoing whispers that seemed to dance on the wind. Turner, a seasoned officer, exchanged a puzzled glance with me. As we delved deeper into the woods, the whispers grew louder and the shadows morphed into indistinct shapes. I radioed for backup, feeling an eerie premonition that something wasn't right. But the radio only crackled in response, and we were left alone in the haunting silence. We stumbled upon an abandoned shack, its windows shattered, doors hanging off their hinges. Inside, a single flickering light bulb swung from the ceiling, casting long, unsettling shadows on the walls. The air reeked of decay, and strange symbols adorned the decaying wallpaper. Turner, ever the skeptic, brushed it off as the work of local pranksters. But as we continued our search, the shadows seemed to grow more tangible. I caught glimpses of twisted faces and contorted figures in the corners of my vision. We reached the heart of the forest, a clearing bathed in an otherworldly glow. In the center stood a circle of hooded figures, their faces hidden in the darkness of their hoods. They chanted in an ancient language, the words sending shivers down my spine. Mrs. Anderson gasped, recognizing the ritual from her nightmares. Panicking, we attempted to retreat, but the shadows closed in, whispering unintelligible secrets. The world around us warped, and the air thickened with an unnatural cold. We fought our way through the encroaching darkness, stumbling out of the forest as the ritual's eerie echoes faded behind us. The backup we called for finally arrived, but the hooded figures had vanished, leaving behind only the haunted whispers in the wind. Silent Creek returned to its peaceful facade, but the memory of that night lingered, a chilling reminder that even in the most serene places, Shadows can hide the unimaginable. Second Story The Abandoned Asylum in East End by Maria Rodriguez I patrolled the city streets of East End, a forgotten neighborhood overshadowed by an abandoned asylum with a grim history. One night, a call came in about strange occurrences near the derelict building. Little did I know, that night would plunge me into the depths of a horror I could never have imagined. The asylum loomed like a malevolent giant against the moonlit sky as my partner, Officer Harris, and I approached cautiously. Broken windows whispered tales of the tormented souls that once inhabited the decaying halls. Our flashlights cut through the darkness revealing graffiti-covered walls and ominous graffiti that seemed to pulse with malevolence. As we ventured deeper, the air grew thick with an oppressive energy. Strange noises echoed through the empty corridors, distant cries, rattling chains, and the faint sound of footsteps that shouldn't have been there. I could feel the weight of unseen eyes on us, and a sense of dread settled in the pit of my stomach. Our radios crackled with static, rendering communication impossible. The only sounds that penetrated the eerie silence were the unsettling echoes of our own footsteps. The asylum seemed to come alive with a presence that defied reason. 
We entered the abandoned cafeteria, where a flickering light bulb cast long, distorted shadows. Tables were overturned, and old patient records littered the floor. As we examined the decaying documents, we heard laughter, a child's laughter that sent shivers down our spines. Following the sound, we stumbled upon a forgotten children's ward. Tattered teddy bears lay strewn across the floor, their glassy eyes reflecting the dim light. The laughter grew louder, accompanied by the faint whispers of spectral voices. Harris, visibly shaken, suggested we leave, but an inexplicable force compelled us to stay. The laughter turned to cries, and the air grew colder. Shadows danced on the walls, taking on grotesque shapes that seemed to mock our presence. We witnessed apparitions of long-forgotten patients, their gaunt faces contorted in eternal suffering. Attempting to escape, we found ourselves trapped in a labyrinth of shifting corridors. The walls seemed to close in, and the air grew suffocating. Panic set in as we realized the asylum had become a maze of torment, a nightmarish realm where time and space twisted into an endless loop. In a desperate bid for freedom, we burst through the asylum's main doors, gasping for air as if breaking free from an unseen stranglehold. The moment we stepped into the moonlit night, the oppressive energy lifted, and the asylum returned to its silent decay. Harris and I never spoke of that night again, haunted by the inexplicable horrors we witnessed within the asylum's crumbling walls. East End remained a place of whispered tales and lingering shadows, a reminder that some nightmares never truly fade away. Third Story The Haunting of Hollow Hill by Emily Turner I served as a police officer in the serene town of Hollow Hill, nestled in the picturesque hills of Virginia. Our community had a reputation for its historic charm, but one case would shatter the illusion of tranquility, plunging me into a chilling tale of darkness that unfolded within the heart of our seemingly idyllic town. It all began with reports of strange occurrences at the old Hollow Hill Cemetery. Residents spoke of flickering lights, ethereal figures, an eerie chance that echoed through the night. Intrigued, my partner, Officer Daniels, and I decided to investigate, unaware that we were about to uncover a horrifying secret. As we entered the cemetery, the air grew heavy with an unnatural chill. Moonlight filtered through ancient oaks, casting long shadows that seemed to writhe and twist. Our flashlights illuminated weathered tombstones, each bearing the weight of forgotten souls. But it was the mausoleum at the heart of the graveyard that drew us in, its stone facade cloaked in an otherworldly glow. The mausoleum's heavy doors creaked open, revealing a pitch-black interior. Reluctantly, we stepped inside, the air thick with an otherworldly presence. Whispers danced on the edge of hearing, and the temperature plummeted as we descended into the crypt below. As we explored the dimly lit catacombs, we stumbled upon a hidden chamber adorned with ancient symbols. A group of hooded figures stood in a circle, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly light. They chanted in a language that seemed to defy the limits of human comprehension. In the center of the chamber, a spectral figure materialized, a woman in a flowing gown, her eyes vacant, yet radiating an otherworldly malevolence. The hooded figures seemed oblivious to our presence as they continued their ritual, the air crackling with an unnatural energy. The woman's gaze fixed upon me, and a gut-wrenching scream echoed through the chamber. Shadows coiled around us, and the temperature plunged to an unbearable cold. Daniels and I attempted to retreat, but an unseen force held us in place, the hooded figure's chance reaching a fevered pitch. The walls seemed to close in, 
and the air thickened with an oppressive weight. Panic set in as the chamber transformed into a nightmarish labyrinth, the boundaries between reality and the supernatural blurring before our eyes. Desperation gripped us as we fought against an unseen force, the spectral woman's laughter echoing in our ears. Suddenly, we found ourselves back in the mausoleum, the chamber vanished, and the hooded figures gone. The air returned to its stillness, and the oppressive presence lifted. We stumbled out of the cemetery, haunted by the inexplicable horrors we witnessed in the heart of Hollow Hill. The town remained shrouded in an unsettling quiet, its historic charm masking the dark secrets that lurked beneath the surface. As a police officer, I patrolled the streets with a newfound awareness that even the most picturesque towns could harbor the shadows of unspeakable horrors. Fourth Story The Vanishing Village of Blackwater Ridge by Jonathan Carter I was assigned to patrol the rural outskirts of Blackwater Ridge, a remote village in the Appalachian Mountains. The tight-knit community had always been known for its isolation, but what transpired during my time there transcended the boundaries of reality, leaving me questioning the very fabric of our existence. One fog late in the evening, a call came in reporting mysterious lights and strange noises echoing through the valleys surrounding Blackwater Ridge. My partner, Officer Reynolds, and I set out to investigate, our patrol car winding through narrow mountain roads shrouded in an otherworldly mist. As we reached the village outskirts, the air grew thicker, and an unsettling silence settled over the landscape. The few residents we encountered wore expressions of fear and whispered tales of spectral figures haunting the surrounding woods. Intrigued, we ventured further into the heart of the mystery. The village square was deserted, its once lively shops now silent and abandoned. Flickering streetlights cast long, ominous shadows that seemed to move independently of any discernible light source. Reynolds and I exchanged uneasy glances as we pressed on, guided only by the faint glow of the moon. A peculiar fog enveloped us as we entered the outskirts of the dense forest. It clung to our skin like a shroud, distorting our surroundings into an ever-shifting dreamscape. The air hummed with an otherworldly resonance, and indistinct whispers carried through the trees— the trail led us to an ancient cemetery hidden within the woods. Weathered gravestones bore names lost to time, and an inexplicable chill settled over the area. As we approached a dilapidated mausoleum, the air crackled with an unsettling energy, and the ground seemed to pulse beneath our feet. The mausoleum doors creaked open on their own accord, revealing a staircase descending into the darkness below. We hesitated but pressed on, our flashlights revealing intricate carvings adorning the chamber walls. The symbols seemed to writhe and shift, as if alive with an arcane power. Deep within the bowels of the mausoleum, we stumbled upon a hidden chamber where hooded figures conducted a ritual around an ancient altar. A sense of dread gripped us as we witnessed the figures invoking forces beyond comprehension their chants resonating with a haunting melody. In the center of the chamber, a portal flickered to life, revealing glimpses of a realm that defied all logic. Unearthly shadows danced on the edges of perception, and the air buzzed with an otherworldly energy. We attempted to retreat, but an invisible force held us in place, and the hooded figures turned their vacant eyes toward us. The world around us twisted and contorted as we were drawn into the portal. Reality fractured, and time seemed to lose its meaning. Reynolds and I found ourselves in a surreal landscape, an amalgamation of dreams and nightmares that defied all reason. Suddenly, we were back in the cemetery, the mausoleum closed, and the hooded figures vanished. 
Blackwater Ridge, however, was forever changed. The once vibrant village had disappeared without a trace, leaving only the echoes of spectral whispers and the haunting memory of an encounter with forces beyond our understanding. As I continued my patrols through the deserted mountains, I couldn't shake the feeling that the boundaries between our world and the supernatural were far more fragile than I had ever dared to imagine. Fifth Story The Abandoned Factory in Ravenscroft by Sarah Mitchell Ravenscroft, a forgotten industrial town in the heart of Pennsylvania, harbored a secret that unfolded before my eyes during a routine patrol. The crumbling remains of an abandoned factory held a darkness that transcended the decaying walls and rusting machinery, revealing a tale of unspeakable horrors that lurked within the shadows. One chilly night, Officer Martinez and I received a call about strange occurrences near the old Ravenscroft factory. Residents spoke of ghostly apparitions, distant screams, and an eerie red glow emanating from the broken windows. Intrigued and apprehensive, we made our way to the heart of the industrial district. The factory loomed like a mausoleum of forgotten dreams, its skeletal structure a testament to a bygone era. As we ventured inside, the air grew thick with an acrid scent, and the distant sound of dripping water echoed through the desolate halls. Our flashlights revealed rusted machinery, abandoned workstations, and an oppressive darkness that seemed to swallow our every step. As we explored deeper into the factory's labyrinthine corridors, we stumbled upon a hidden chamber where flickering candles cast dancing shadows on the walls. Strange symbols adorned the floor, and a red glow pulsed from an unseen source. Martinez, a skeptic by nature, shot me a wary glance as we approached the ominous tableau. The air grew colder as we witnessed hooded figures in the midst of a ritual. Their chants resonated with an unsettling cadence, and the room seemed to vibrate with an otherworldly energy. In the center of the chamber, a spectral figure materialized, a woman with hollow eyes that bore into our very souls. Suddenly, the factory came alive with ghostly apparitions, tormented souls trapped in a purgatory of industrial decay. Their anguished cries echoed through the chamber and the temperature plummeted as if the air itself recoiled from the spectral presence. Martinez and I, paralyzed by the unfolding horror, watched as the apparitions reached out, their ethereal fingers brushing against our skin. The factory's walls seemed to close in, and the room warped into a nightmarish tableau of twisted metal and tormented spirits. Desperation set in as we fought against an unseen force, the hooded figure's chance reaching a crescendo. The factory became a maelstrom of supernatural energy, and reality itself seemed to unravel before our eyes. In a blinding flash, we found ourselves outside the factory, the ominous red glow fading into the night. The industrial district of Ravenscroft returned to its silent decay but the memory of that night lingered. The factory, once a symbol of progress, now stood as a gateway to a realm of unspeakable horrors. As Officer Martinez and I continued our patrols, we couldn't escape the chilling realization that some secrets are better left buried in the decaying heart of forgotten towns. Sixth Story The Whispering Woods of Silverbrook by Michael Johnson Silverbrook, a serene town nestled in the woods of upstate New York, held a secret that unraveled during my time as a police officer. The dense forest surrounding the town concealed a darkness that defied logic, drawing me into a chilling tale of spectral whispers and ancient rituals that played out in the shadowy depths of the whispering woods. One autumn night, Officer Ramirez and I responded to reports of strange lights and unsettling sounds near the outskirts of Silverbrook. 
The town had always been a haven of tranquility, but the dense woods that bordered its edges hid secrets that would plunge us into a nightmarish encounter with the supernatural. As we ventured deeper into the whispering woods, an eerie stillness settled over the air. The moonlight struggled to penetrate the thick canopy, casting the forest into a tapestry of shifting shadows. Ramirez and I exchanged wary glances, our senses heightened by an unspoken tension that hung in the air. Whispers, soft and indistinct, danced on the edge of hearing. The wind rustled through the leaves, creating an unsettling symphony of disembodied voices. The forest seemed alive with a presence that defied explanation, and an unnatural cold settled in the air. We stumbled upon an ancient clearing bathed in an otherworldly glow. Symbols, carved into the bark of ancient trees, pulsed with an ethereal energy. In the center of the clearing, hooded figures conducted a ritual, their chants blending with the haunting whispers of the woods. As we approached, the figures turned toward us, their faces hidden in the shadows of their hoods. The air thickened with a palpable tension, and the forest seemed to hold its breath. Ramirez and I, gripped by a mixture of fear and fascination, watched as the ritual unfolded before our eyes. A spectral figure materialized in the center of the clearing, a woman with flowing hair that seemed to cascade like liquid moonlight. Her eyes bore into ours, and a sense of dread settled over the clearing. The whispers grew louder, merging with the hooded figure's chants in a disconcerting symphony of supernatural energy. Attempting to retreat, we found ourselves ensnared by an invisible force. The forest itself seemed to come alive, branches twisting and contorting like spectral fingers reaching out. The ground beneath us shifted, and the symbols on the trees pulsed with an otherworldly light. In a blinding flash, we were transported to a surreal realm that mirrored the whispering woods but existed on the periphery of reality. Ghostly apparitions floated through the air, their faces twisted in silent agony. Ramirez and I, disoriented and overcome by a sense of helplessness, stumbled through the spectral landscape. Suddenly, we were back in the whispering woods, the clearing returned to its silent serenity. The hooded figures were gone, and the forest echoed only with the fading whispers of the encounter. Ramirez and I stumbled out of the woods, forever changed by the chilling realization that even the most peaceful places could harbor the shadows of unspeakable horrors. As we continued our patrols through Silverbrook, the whispering woods remained an enigma, a haunting reminder that some secrets are best left undisturbed in the ancient embrace of the silent, spectral forest. Seventh Story The Haunted Harbor of Cresthaven by Olivia Harper Cresthaven, a picturesque harbor town on the coast of Massachusetts, held a secret that unraveled during my time as a police officer. The town's historic charm belied a darkness that dwelled beneath its weathered docks and creaking ships. What began as routine patrols turned into a haunting tale of spectral apparitions and maritime mysteries that played out on the shores of Cresthaven Harbor. One fog laden night, Officer Davis and I responded to reports of mysterious happenings near the old lighthouse at the edge of Cresthaven Harbor. The air was thick with a salty mist, and the haunting wails of distant foghorns echoed through the town. Little did we know that the harbor, once a beacon of maritime history, harbored secrets that would send shivers down our spines. As we approached the lighthouse, the rhythmic pulses of its beacon cut through the fog. The creaking of the wooden dock beneath our feet seemed to synchronize with the melancholic lull of the waves. Davis and I, seasoned officers though we were, couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. We entered the lighthouse, its spiral staircase winding upwards into the darkness. 
The air grew colder with each step, and the walls seemed to whisper tales of lost sailors and shipwrecks that dotted the town's history. An oppressive energy hung in the air, and the creaking of the stairs beneath our boots added an eerie cadence to the atmosphere. At the top, we found ourselves in the lantern room. The beams of light cut through the fog, revealing the outline of ghostly ships in the distance. The harbor seemed frozen in time, and the spectral figures of sailors went about their duties on long-forgotten vessels. Davis and I exchanged bewildered glances as we witnessed a maritime apparition playing out before us. Suddenly, the air filled with the sound of distant sea shanties and the creaking of ghostly rigging. The lighthouse itself seemed to sway with the invisible currents of an ethereal tide. We watched in awe as the harbor became a living tapestry of maritime history, its spectral inhabitants oblivious to our presence. As we descended the lighthouse, we found ourselves on the docks where ghostly sailors loaded and unloaded phantom cargo. The air echoed with the disembodied laughter of long-lost sailors and the harbor seemed to come alive with a spectral energy that transcended the boundaries of time. However, as we delved deeper into the mysteries of Crest Haven Harbor, the atmosphere shifted. The once celebratory spirits of sailors turned melancholic, their spectral eyes filled with a yearning for a home that no longer existed. The air grew heavy with an unspeakable sorrow and the harbor transformed into a haunting scene of maritime tragedy. We stumbled upon a memorial, weathered by time and neglect, commemorating sailors lost at sea. The names etched into the stone seemed to resonate with the whispers of the harbor, telling tales of shipwrecks and lost souls forever bound to the watery depths. The spirits of Crest Haven Harbor, trapped in a limbo between life and death, sought solace in their maritime memories. As Davis and I left the harbor, the fog lifted, revealing Crest Haven in its tranquil facade once more. The lighthouse stood silent, its lantern extinguished, and the docks returned to a peaceful stillness. The maritime apparitions faded into the recesses of the town's history leaving behind only the echoes of spectral sea shanties that lingered in the salty breeze. Crest Haven, forever marked by the haunting tales of its spectral harbor, continued its existence as a coastal haven with secrets buried beneath the waves. Officer Davis and I patrolled the town with a newfound awareness that even the most charming harbors could harbor the ghosts of maritime tragedies, and the ocean's depths held more mysteries than met the eye. Eighth Story, The Enigma of Ebonvale Manor by William Foster Ebonvale Manor, a grand estate nestled in the English countryside, became the focal point of my haunting experiences during my tenure as a police officer. The manor, with its ivy-covered walls and imposing turrets, held a dark secret that unfolded before me in a chilling tale of spectral manifestations and unsettling revelations that transcended the boundaries of the living. One dreary afternoon, Officer Bennett and I received a call regarding strange occurrences at Ebonvale Manor. The estate, a relic of bygone eras, stood surrounded by ancient oaks that seemed to whisper tales of the manor's enigmatic history. Little did we know that our investigation would lead us down a path of supernatural encounters that defied explanation. As we approached the manor, its looming silhouette against the overcast sky seemed to exude an air of foreboding. The wrought iron gates creaked open with an eerie groan, and the gravel path led us through overgrown gardens that hinted at past grandeur. Our footsteps echoed through the silent grounds as we approached the imposing front doors. The moment we crossed the threshold, an unsettling stillness settled over the manor. Dust particles danced in the dim light that filtered through stained glass windows. The air smelled of aged wood and ancient secrets, 
and the manor seemed to pulse with an unseen energy that sent shivers down our spines. We explored the grand hallways adorned with portraits of stoic ancestors, their eyes following our every move. The flickering candlelight cast long shadows that seemed to move independently of any discernible source. The manor itself felt like a living entity, and as we ventured into its depths, an oppressive weight settled in the air. Our investigation led us to a forgotten library, its shelves lined with dusty tomes and weathered manuscripts. A grand piano stood in the corner, its keys untouched by human hands for years. As we examined the room, the air grew colder, and the piano played a haunting melody on its own accord. Bennett and I exchanged startled glances as the spectral notes filled the silent manor. Further exploration revealed secret passages and hidden chambers, each bearing witness to the manor's mysterious past. We stumbled upon a dilapidated ballroom where spectral figures twirled in a never-ending dance. The laughter of a bygone era echoed through the centuries and the ballroom itself seemed frozen in a spectral waltz. In the heart of Ebonvale Manor, we discovered a chamber adorned with symbols and sigils that hinted at arcane rituals. Candlelight flickered around an ancient altar, and the air buzzed with an otherworldly energy. A figure materialized, a woman in a gown that seemed to blend with the shadows. Her hollow eyes bore into ours, and a sense of dread settled over the chamber. As we attempted to leave, the manor itself seemed to resist our exit. Doors slammed shut, and the walls seemed to close in. The air crackled with an energy that defied the laws of nature. Bennett and I, gripped by an unseen force, found ourselves transported to a surreal dreamscape where time and space seemed to lose all meaning. In a flash, we were back in the library, the manor returned to its silent decay. The spectral figures, the haunted ballroom, and the arcane chamber vanished, leaving behind only the echoes of a bygone era. Ebonvale Manor, forever shrouded in enigma, stood as a testament to the inexplicable mysteries that linger within the walls of ancient estates. As Bennett and I left the manor, the gates creaking shut behind us, we couldn't shake the feeling that Ebonvale Manor held secrets that transcended the boundaries of the living. The English countryside, with its rolling hills and ivy-covered manors, became a landscape where the supernatural and the mundane intertwined in a dance of spectral whispers and ancient rituals. Ninth Story The Shadows of Silent Creek by Mark Thompson I served as a police officer in the small town of Silent Creek, nestled deep in the woods of Oregon. The job was quiet, and crime was a rarity in our tight-knit community. But there was one incident that still sends shivers down my spine. It was a foggy autumn night when a distressed woman called 911, reporting strange figures lurking in the woods near her property. I, along with my partner Officer Turner, responded to the call. The air was thick with an unsettling tension as we ventured into the dense forest. The woman, Mrs. Anderson, guided us to the edge of her property, pointing nervously into the darkness. We strained our eyes, trying to make sense of the shadows. That's when we heard it soft, echoing whispers that seemed to dance on the wind. Turner, a seasoned officer, exchanged a puzzled glance with me. As we delved deeper into the woods, the whispers grew louder and the shadows morphed into indistinct shapes. I radioed for backup, feeling an eerie premonition that something wasn't right. But the radio only crackled in response, and we were left alone in the haunting silence. We stumbled upon an abandoned shack its windows shattered, doors hanging off their hinges. Inside, a single flickering light bulb swung from the ceiling, casting long, unsettling shadows on the walls. 
The air reeked of decay, and strange symbols adorned the decaying wallpaper. Turner, ever the skeptic, brushed it off as the work of local pranksters. But as we continued our search, the shadows seemed to grow more tangible. I caught glimpses of twisted faces and contorted figures in the corners of my vision. We reached the heart of the forest, a clearing bathed in an otherworldly glow. In the center stood a circle of hooded figures, their faces hidden in the darkness of their hoods. They chanted in an ancient language, the words sending shivers down my spine. Mrs. Anderson gasped, recognizing the ritual from her nightmares. Panicking, we attempted to retreat, but the shadows closed in, whispering unintelligible secrets. The world around us warped, and the air thickened with an unnatural cold. We fought our way through the encroaching darkness, stumbling out of the forest as the ritual's eerie echoes faded behind us. The backup we called for finally arrived, but the hooded figures had vanished, leaving behind only the haunted whispers in the wind. Silent Creek returned to its peaceful facade, but the memory of that night lingered, a chilling reminder that even in the most serene places, shadows can hide the unimaginable. Tenth Story The Forgotten Village of Wickwood by Catherine Scott in the heart of the English countryside, surrounded by rolling hills and ancient forests, there existed a forgotten village named Wickwood. My tenure as a police officer brought me to this remote and mysterious place, where the shadows of the past merge seamlessly with the present, creating an unsettling tapestry of inexplicable events and spectral apparitions. One cloudy afternoon, Officer Walsh and I received a call reporting strange happenings in Wickwood. The village, seemingly frozen in time, bore the weight of centuries on its moss-covered cottages and cobblestone streets. As we approached, an oppressive stillness settled over the village, and a sense of foreboding crept into our hearts. Wickwood's residents wary of outsiders, spoke of whispers in the wind and flickering lights that danced through the ancient woods. The village square, surrounded by centuries-old buildings, felt like a stage where the past and present coexisted in an eerie harmony. Our footsteps echoed through the narrow streets as we delved into the heart of the enigma that was Wickwood. We reached an ancient inn, its time-worn sign swaying in the wind. Inside, the air was heavy with the scent of aged wood and the warmth of a crackling fireplace. The innkeeper, an elderly woman with eyes that seemed to hold centuries of secrets, spoke in hushed tones of a forgotten ritual that unfolded on the outskirts of the village. As twilight descended, we ventured into the woods, guided only by the soft glow of lanterns and the whispers of the wind. The trees, gnarled and twisted, seemed to watch our every move. The village, now distant behind us, felt like a fading memory as we reached the clearing where the ritual was said to occur. The air grew thick with an otherworldly energy, and the ground beneath us seemed to pulse with an ancient heartbeat. Hooded figures emerged from the shadows, their faces obscured by the folds of their robes. They chanted in a language that resonated with an ancient power, and the wind carried their words through the trees. In the center of the clearing stood a weathered stone altar, adorned with symbols that hinted at a forgotten religion. A spectral figure materialized, a woman with flowing hair and eyes that glowed with an ethereal light. The villagers, entranced by the ritual, watched as the apparition danced with the wind a manifestation of a timeless entity. As we attempted to approach, the air thickened, and the spectral figure turned its gaze toward us. The wind howled, and the hooded figures ceased their chanting. The village itself seemed to hold its breath, and the boundary between the past and present blurred before our eyes. In a sudden flash, we found ourselves standing in the village square, 
The clearing and the spectral figure vanished. The hooded figures were gone, and Wickwood returned to its ancient stillness. The villagers, as if awakening from a trance, went about their daily lives, seemingly oblivious to the supernatural events that had unfolded. As Officer Walsh and I left Wickwood, the echoes of the ritual lingered in the wind, and the village seemed to watch us with ancient eyes. The mysteries of Wickwood remained shrouded in the mists of time, a testament to the fact that in forgotten corners of the world, the past and the present can intertwine in a dance of enigmatic whispers and spectral rituals. Thank you for sticking with us through the whole video. Also, I recommend you this video you see on screen, one of the scariest on my channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. This helps me bring you more thrilling content every day. If this video sent shivers down your spine, let me know in the comments.